I am here with Nancy Nagel today, and we're going to be talking about her new book, The Shell Collector, which just published today. We're so excited. It's on display all over the shop, and we can't wait to talk to Nancy about it. Um, also, Nancy's friend Kimberly is here with us, and you may see her pop on um, with some suggestions, questions, or some links for you guys. Um, please feel free to ask any questions you have in the chat window, and I'll voice them for Nancy for you. If anybody's having trouble logging on, just have them send me a Facebook message or an email and I'll help them out getting online, okay? Um, so we're gonna do a little introduction for Nancy and then I'll turn it over to her to talk to us for a little bit. So Nancy is a USA Today bestselling author whose many contemporary romance novels include The Adams Grove, Boot Creek, and Christmas and Evergreen series. Several of her novels have been adopted, adapted to the television screen, airing on the Hallmark Channel and on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries including the popular Christmas Joy and Hope at Christmas. Nancy makes her home in Virginia, which she just moved from North Carolina. Thank you so much for being here, Nancy. Thank you, Jackie. I'm so excited. Thank you to you and Hub City Books for hosting this tonight. Of course. It has been an awesome day. <laughs> um, do you wanna tell us a little bit about your book to start us off? Yeah, I would. Well, first, I want to thank everybody for being here. And we've got the chat window. So if you've got questions throughout, pop them in there. And Kimberly and Jackie are going to help me make sure that we address all your questions because I want you to, to get what you want out of this, uh, this time we have together. But I thank you all so much for being here and for being a part of this book. This book is so special to me. You know, in a, in a nutshell, for those who don't have a copy yet, um, it's about a young mother who's struggling with her husband's death and a brokenhearted, uh, heartbroken Marine who's facing his past, and an older widow who is secretly spreading wisdom while she still can along the shore of Welks Island through mysterious inscribed shells that are showing up and spreading hope and joy to those who need them most. I absolutely adore this story. Oh my gosh. You know, um, a lot of books are in your mind for a long time before they ever come up, become a book. And this story was, extra special because it was a story that my cousin Diane told me about back, gosh, I think it might have been 2006, 2008 the first time. And um, it's a friend of the family who lived down in the Outer Banks. And um, she had had something heavy on her mind. It was walking down the beach and had kicked up a shell. And when she picked it up, it had an, an, a, a scripture written inside it. And it was perfect for what she was dealing with at the time. And so, you know, it gave me chills the first time that Diane shared that with me. But then the story went on that she then later found another shell. And this one wasn't buried in the sand like the first one. It was just off near her house. And it had a special message in it. I don't think it was a scripture that time, but a special message. And she talked to other people about it in the area. Nobody else had found them. And she really never knew who they were coming from. So she considered them her messages from the angels by the sea. Turned out that she did find a couple more over the years. And, you know, I just, that, it just absolutely blew me away. I thought that is just the neatest story. Well, uh, in January 2014, I lost my husband to a short battle with cancer, and Diane had been fighting cancer for years, too, and um, I lost her the month after I lost Mike, and so that story, you know, stayed close to me through that, and I could have used a bucket of those shells and scriptures to get through that year. It was, it was really tough, um, but through the, the grieving process and and I did everything wrong that you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, they tell every widow, don't make any big decisions. Wait for a year. Don't spend any money. And I didn't do any of that. I, um, I took <laughs> and told my mom we were going to move and uh, went up to the, uh, or down to North Carolina and spent a weekend house shopping, bought a house. Uh, decided then I was going to take an early retirement and write full time, which if anybody knows that is not something that a lot of people make a living at. Um, but I was really just trusting this big switch in my life. And so I don't recommend my path to everyone, but I do believe that God was speaking to me and he was, had given me something special to do. And I really considered it my gift to do. And, and not only that, you know, I, I think when you're, when you're dealing with that, um, 
with death and the loss of a spouse, my husband and I were married for 20 years. Um, I felt very almost frantic that I needed to do everything I wanted to do now, you know? Um, and so that's what I did. Um, started writing full time, trusted the journey. My mama moved in with me. Um, she's my biggest cheerleader and she reads all my books a hundred times before y'all ever see them <laughs> and then still loves them when they come out. How's that? <laughs> Best mom ever. Um, and, uh, she, uh, she has been a real cheerleader for this too. So the interesting thing was that uh, even though I had that story in the back of my mind for a long time before I lost my husband and Diane, it kept tickling me to, to do something with it. And I did some further investigation around people finding shells. And of course, I thought a little bit about um, message in a bottle and how they had those letters that were in the, the shop and stuff. Well, it turned out there was a lady that lived down off the coast of Florida, and she had taken that cast your worries on the water seriously and she was casting thousands of shells off the beach out near her home and she included her phone number on them and some of them were simply a heart or a smiley face or a have a nice day and you know, all kinds of messages some short some long and she got lots of phone calls back from people letting them know that they found her shells and sometimes they were up north now she admitted that she didn't know if that was somebody that had found it near her house and moved, you know, went back home and called her or not. But um, it really brought a lot of joy to her that she was bringing joy and shaping people's lives to that small act of kindness. You know, and some people do that with rocks. Um, I've got a girlfriend that worked for me, gosh, back in 1994, we're still good friends. And she had painted some little rocks for me and they were always really special. So those thoughts all strung together just felt so powerful in such a small, little, crafty, sincere way. And so that's how the, the, the Shell Collector became a story. Um, I, you know, I had that idea and decided that um, I was going to set it on the coast of North Carolina because it's one of my favorite places in the world. It's just so beautiful. And um, then Maeve was the first character that came to me, the older widow that was walking the beach. And I knew in my mind that she was gonna be a special gal. And boy, do I wanna be just like her. <laughs> and then Amanda, the young widow um, came to, to me. And of course that, a lot of that was a lot of my personal journey too. And that's why it took me so long to write this book. I mean, in 2014, you know, I really felt like I was, had a story, but there was no way I could write it um, until recently. But I knew I wanted to, and it was important to me. And we were so blessed. I have a, an agent that really believed in the story. And we took it out to all of the publishers, five of the main publishers, and all five of them wanted the story. And that just doesn't happen, or at least it had never happened to me. But it really made me feel like it was confirmation that I was doing the right thing. And um, so I'm working with Waterbrook Press on this story. I absolutely adore them. They believe in the story as much as I do. And um, it, they helped me make it shine even more. <laughs> so along with Amanda and Maeve, who are our two main characters in the book, um, there's also a handsome man in the story and his name is Paul. And uh, in the beginning, he had this, um, kind of kennel resort for dogs. And he'd give the people discounts if they came and visited their dogs while they were on vacation. But the more I got to know him, the more I just really liked him. And so he became better and better and better. So some of the things that happened were that um, not only was he opening these kind of kennel resorts for the dogs, but he was doing them in those old worn out ghost box stores. Do you know what those are? Have you heard that phrase before? It's, it's where like the Kmart or the Lowe's has opened another location like right down the street and they closed down the old one. That drives me bonkers. I'm like, somebody needs to just give that building to somebody and let them do something good. So I had him solving for that problem. And then like that wasn't enough because he was an ex-Marine, I decided he needed to really work on helping bring back those retired military working dogs and get them reunited with their handlers. So he became like a hero of all heroes. <laughs> and I love him so much. And I think you will too, when you start reading the story. <laughs>
<laughs> oh gosh. It was really a joy to write. It was hard. Um, I definitely had pulled from a lot of my own personal emotion, but uh, the story sounds like it's going to be a downer because we've got, you know, two widows that are really kind of rescuing each other. But among, you know, the, the antics, we, we've got um, uh, Amanda's two children, Haley and Jesse, who were so fun to write. So I grew up in Virginia Beach and my aunt had a house right on the bay. So we would go and spend time on the bay. And there were a few weeks in the summer that that bay was filled with jellyfish, but it didn't keep us from still going down to the beach. And I remember getting over that daggone sand dune and having to throw that towel down and jump on it to get your feet cool and it'd take a couple other steps. So the, all the, the stories in the book around the beach and, um, you know, ghost crabbing and doing drip sand castles, things like that, were drawn from my brother and I growing up at the beach. And that was really fun for me. I lost him um, a, quite a few years ago, I guess 13 years ago now. Um, but it was fun to relive some of those memories and think of our childhood and, and how we reacted to some of those things. And, and I think it really lightens the mood and it gives the reader a chance to kind of catch their breath and giggle and hopefully think of some of the things that you used to do. Um, the ghost crabbing and hi, Amber Blackwell's daughter, I see her <laughs> waving. Um, <laughs> but I think there's enough um, fun in the story that it will keep you engaged and not sad. Although I, I know that you will probably pull out a few tissues um, because there, there are certainly some sweet things in it. <laughs> Sounds like you really poured your heart into this novel. Oh, I did. I love it so much. <laughs> um, one of the uh, attendees, Brooke, just said, I cried so much reading this one. Oh, Brooke. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I made you cry, but I hope there was some joy in those tears too. <laughs> um then we have another one that a couple more that just say happy release day and happy launch day and Thank amber you. blackwell said my daughter says hi and she wants you to know she loves the secret ingredient <gasps> oh ma, thank you <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun movie and a better book <laughs> we were talking about that right before we came on screen and kimberly was saying i love the pig and the secret ingredient <laughs> And that was the one thing that I was sorry that Hallmark didn't do was let uh, Kelly still have a pig. She, they gave her that little uh, cute uh, border collie dog or Australian shepherd. I forget what it was now. And um, they even changed his name to George. And the secret ingredient, the, the little micro pig's name is Gray for good riddance Andrew York after he left and didn't come back. They thought that was a little too sassy for the Hallmark channel. <laughs> oh, I was like, hey, women do a lot worse things when a guy breaks her heart. <laughs> Burning <laughs> pictures, cutting his face out. <laughs> I'm thinking naming a micro pig was pretty, uh, pretty easy. <laughs> Tame compared to some things I've heard. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> So if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you, um, you were just talking about the shells and the messages and in the book, it sounds like they're kind of used as like a, a symbol for small gifts in life in, in addition to actually being a physical gift. What made you connect those two things to kind of remind people to enjoy the little yeah, things? Yeah, it definitely is. And you know, I, I never knew that I was going to be an author, never even thought about it. I was a senior vice president with Bank of America, had a big career. That's all I ever wanted to do from the time I was a little girl, graduated early from high school, started working. I knew I wanted a big career and um, my life changed so much. And I have been blessed with the gift of story. And I am trying as fast and hard as I can to share as many as I can. But you know, it is those special gifts that only we can share that are so important and they really are so easy to share that um, that really became a theme in the book. And Amanda does um, a lot of stuff with herbs. So she grows herbs and dries them. And then she's got the little pestle and mortar thing and she does salted herbs and is you know gonna do this little business out of it. And she's really great with it. And she knows the aromatherapy parts of it, all kinds of stuff. And so, yeah, I really do think that you know, being able to tap into what those gifts are, it's sometimes harder, or maybe we make it harder than it really is, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because it seems like, what's my gift? It has to be something like 
no one else in the world can do, you know, and then that isn't necessarily it, you know, and so just be open to what's coming in front of you and, and what it is you can do that is lighting people's way. And so, and here's this is fun. So we shared this earlier too offline. We had, we had some fun before y'all got here. <laughs> Sorry. So one of the things I do for every single novel that I write is I create a Pinterest board. So anybody else out there get lost or procrastinate their way through Pinterest every day? <laughs> Once a week. Yeah, me too. Every writer should not be a procrastinator, but I am fantastic. And I grew up that way. My mama, and she, I believe she's dialed in here, but she would tell you that I was the little girl that would do the big project the night before and she would be so angry with me and that next day I would go in with my project and get an A. And she, it only made me feel like I am a great last minute worker so I procrastinate all the time but anyway while I was collecting pictures for the shell collector I ran across these beautiful shells and so I've been making some shells and I hope you can kind of see them. Yes, and I'm putting the some of the quotes inside. So this one says, interrupt worry with gratitude, which happens to be my favorite quote from the book. It is so simple. But this girl here, me, I have been filled with anxiety my whole life. My goodness gracious, I let everything just worry me to death. And interrupt worry with gratitude. If you can just remember this, your life will be so much better. <laughs> and sometimes you really have to slam interrupt that worry. <laughs> but, um, so I really, I tried doing these. Isn't that just adorable? And it's so simple, right? It, I thought it was going to be super easy. And this one looks like a little quilt. I don't know yeah. if you can see the stitches on it. Um, I thought it was going to be super easy and I was going to paint them and you know you had all these paint brushes and paints and what I realized was these little scout shells are really really ridged and so it was really hard and I thought well how are these people getting these really pretty polka dots on them well there are these little tools that are like a little lot of glass and they're different widths and so you can make small dots or big dots depending on which ones you buy and so there are super easy ways to make them so I challenge y'all to Next time you have a bucket of shells and you're like, I can't keep them all. You can keep an extra couple and make some. <laughs> and I am going to be giving some of these away today during the call, along with a few other things. But uh, I also I also do a Pinterest board for the books that I'm writing. Um, so I don't do them after the book is done. But as I'm writing the book and I'm kind of researching and, you know, experimenting, I'll start pulling pictures in. So you'll notice like on the shell collector, there are pictures of um, little bulldogs, little black and white bulldogs that are so cute. And um, there are lots of pictures of herbs and recipes for the salted herbs. Um, there are lots of shells, beautiful shells, um, some recipes for seafood, that kind of stuff. So right now um, I'm working on a couple other books, The Wedding Ranch, and what remains true. And so if you go out to my Pinterest board, you will find boards for both of those. And you'll be able to see the little snippets of things that I'm researching. And so you'll kind of know what the story is gonna be about. <laughs> and I added the link in the comments. Thank you, Kimberly. So they can find it for you. You are awesome. Yeah, so you can get lost and procrastinate there for a little while. <laughs> Isn't that <That's> helpful? <laughs> Those are really gorgeous. I love how much fun you're having with, with the book and with its release. Well, there happens to be a little shell on the way in that priority package. <laughs> We've been trying to get the book plates to Jackie and the mail has not been cooperative. So she got the first one I sent out over a week and a half ago and she hasn't gotten it. And so then I sent out a priority mailer. So I did tuck a little shell in there. So you be looking for that. <laughs> I definitely will. That's so sweet. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, so if anyone hasn't gotten their books yet, that's because we're waiting for the signed book plates because um, I want to make sure everybody gets um, a signed one. So yeah, and Nancy has a little giveaway with her shells for later. Yes. So that's yes, exciting. I do. And yeah, so if you don't have the novel yet, and you want a, a signed one, Jackie will have the book plates eventually, even if I have to drive down to visit her. <laughs> and um, so she'll be able to send you a book with a book plate in it and you will be set. 
I'm really excited about that. Um, <laughs> it, makes, it makes the books even more special to have the author's signature in there. I think um, so too. And they make such great gifts too, you know? It, it, we came out just a little too late for Mother's Day. Um, <laughs> but, you know, this book is also going to be in hardcover in September. Oh, which exciting. I'm so excited. Yes. And sometimes they change the cover on the jacket for those hardcover library edition and large print. So I'm really excited to see that. So keep it on your calendar if it's one of your favorite books and you're going to put it face out on your shelf. <laughs> You might want a hardcover copy too. <laughs> and who did the audio for this book? Oh, that's such a great question. Mm -hmm. So anybody that saw The Secret Ingredient on Hallmark Channel, Erin Cahill was the actress who played um, Kelly in that movie. And she is absolutely adorable. She's a Virginia girl, just like me, just like Kimberly. <laughs> and um, she is so nice. And she sent me a couple of notes while they were filming. And so we kind of hit it off and she gave me a beautiful blurb for the shell collector. And um, interestingly enough, because she had put that blurb in the shell collector, when the audio team from Random House um, got ready to start booking the actress to do the voiceover, they noticed it and recognized her name. And they called me and said, hey, Nancy, how would you feel about Aaron Cahill doing the narration of the shell collector and I about fell out of my chair and they said if you know her and you want to kind of ask her first that'd be great and I was like sure and so I sent her a note and she was so excited but she was as excited as I was so it was so great she sent me a few pictures um, they actually recorded it right there in Nashville which is where she's living now and she is the voice of the shell collector I am just thrilled I mean I think you know it's funny because I don't know how many of y'all listen to audiobooks. I always have a little trouble doing the audiobooks. The first time I ever tried them, I thought I'd use them on the, my commute. And what I found is that I became a very dangerous driver. <laughs> I was paying so much attention to the story that I was not paying attention to the road. So I quit doing the audiobooks then. But once my I started writing and my all my books are done in audio as well, I you know listened to a few of them. And it's so strange. First, first of all, it's strange because I already have heard the story in my head <laughs> and I know what those voices are supposed to sound like, but they always get a Southern woman to do the narration and it's usually somebody really breathy. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not how we talk. And um, yeah, it's really strange. So I know having Erin do it because she's from Virginia. I'm like, okay, so we're just gonna have a really good, normal Virginia, North Carolina kind of voice. So I'm really excited. And I haven't even heard the, the cuts on it yet. They're still in final edits. And, um, or I guess they're done now because it's out, but uh, I didn't get to hear it even as of last week. So I'll have to get my copy to hear it. <laughs> we had, uh, Darla said she loves audiobooks, So I'm sure that she'll let us know how those yeah. are. Give me a score. Let me know what you think about it. I was so tickled to be able to do more work with Erin. She is just a brilliant actress, but uh, yeah, I lo love her voice. It was exciting. <laughs> and there also is a, um, a um, independent bookstore oriented audiobook app called Libro um, oh. FM. If anybody wants to use that instead of Audible, you can select an independent bookstore for it to um, benefit. So oh, that's kind perfect. of cool. Libro side FM. Can mm -hmm. you put the link in the chat yeah. for us, Jackie, too? That's Absolutely. awesome. Yes, we need to support our indie bookstores. And if you have not bought your copy, you can order them through Hub City Books and she will make sure you have a book plate and a bookmark. I've sent her some bookmarks too. So um, definitely help our indie stores out. <laughs> Thank you. You're um, <laughs> do you want to get, um, I wanted to get into, oh wait, we have a question. Let's ask that first. Um, Amber wants to know about different, a different book. Um, any chance of a fourth evergreen or a second secret ingredient? Oh, um, the fourth evergreen is out. Um, I was, so the evergreen stories, this is kind of interesting. So I'll take you down the path. So Christmas Joy and Hope at Christmas were Hallmark movies based on novels that I wrote. The Christmas and Evergreen stories were Hallmark original movies, and they contacted me and asked me if I'd write books for them. So it was really interesting. I thought it was going to be so easy. They sent me the script, and they sent me the movie, and then I had to turn that into a book. 
I'm like, great, no problem. So I reformatted the script and turned it into dialogue and I had 20,000 words. Well, they wanted at least 70,000 words. So I was pretty far <laughs> from having a book. Um, so yeah, so those stories were not made for my imagination. They were Hallmark's uh, screenplay writer's um, imagination. But you know, I found that the challenge was, I, I love Hallmark movies and they're so beautiful. And you know, Evergreen is a character of its own. It is just such a great town. But when I write my own novels, you know, I try to give enough description so people know how charming it is or how old or new or whatever. But I also leave just enough that hopefully you're bringing some of your childhood or favorite vacation places into the story. So that's kind of your story, you know? But in the case of these Hallmark Christmas and Evergreen books, the readers had already seen the beautiful movies. They already knew exactly what everything looked like. So that was a real challenge to write exactly what it looked like. And I watched those scenes over and over and over to try to get them just right. Now I did get the opportunity to do a lot more internal dialogue and um, motivation. And there were some things like in the first Christmas in Evergreen. So I think some of y'all that know me like Peg and there's my mama and Brooke, y'all all know I used to have a goat farm. So, I'm, and, and so we did a lot of stuff with 4-H and so I knew a lot about animals. Well, in the first Christmas in Evergreen, the farmer is just worried to death about his cow having that calf. And he is just worried because, you know, the veterinarian's leaving and going out of town and he's just worried to death. And I'm like, first of all, no cow farmer is going to be like that. And then when they did have the calf, it was a, I think it was a Jersey cow and the calf was a Holstein. And I was like, so I added to the book that, um, yes, you can. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little eight-year-old yes or no question. Can I watch TV? Oh. <laughs> That's so sweet. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, so to make that make more sense, I had added in the story that he had spent all this money on this big, important in vitro program. And he, that is why he was so frantic about that calf being, you know, okay. And she was, <laughs> she was just carrying that expensive calf. Um, so I did get the chance to do that. And then they also asked me to write um, an epilogue. And on the first book, they forgot to tell me that until about two days before it was due. And the editor contacted me, sent me an email and she's like, I think I might've forgotten to ask you if you could write an epilogue. And I'm really sorry to ask you this like two days before it's due. And I was like, no, thank you so much because I still needed like 5,000 words. And I was struggling to beef up. I mean, like how pretty the snow was, <laughs> everything else. So I ended up being able to write an epilogue. And those were a lot of fun in all three of the books. But uh, they did come to me for Tidings of Joy, which was the fourth, Christmas and Evergreen movie that came out last year and it needed to be turned in. Um, they were gonna get me that stuff in February and I needed to have it in April and I had two other deadlines. So I was unable to do that. So they have passed it along to someone else. So someone else will be the voice of the fourth and I don't know if they'll come back to me for the fifth or not. So that's that story. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We have actually a lot of questions about your work with Hallmark um, yeah. going on. I don't know if you want, do you want to steer that direction or do you want sure. to steer? Okay. I so, think that's fine. Whatever you want to know. <laughs> so Lori asked, what's your favorite thing to happen with your pairing with Hallmark? Oh, wow. There's so many things. You know, I think my biggest moment was going to do the home and family show in LA. Um, and they booked my flight and I was flying first class out to LA and they treated me so nice. They had the car pick me up and all that stuff. I just felt like a real big deal. And when I was in first class, the guy that sat next to me, I looked at him and I thought, he looks kind of like Nicholas Sparks. And then I just kind of blew it off. Well, then he ended up talking to the, the airline attendant 
and she was talking about all these places he was traveling well long story short it was Nicholas Sparks I got to sit right next to him and I was going to do the home and family show and so I I did not bend his ear and ask him any questions I was very um well behaved I did not fangirl him but I did tell him I said well I'm on my way to he said are you going to LA for fun or work and I said well I'm I'm an author and I have a movie on Hallmark so I'm going to do the home and family show I'm like it's just a little Hallmark movie not a great big Nick the Sparks movie but I'm such a big fan and he said no it's just as important that's so great and he made a big deal about it and so He's got my heart forever now. Um, <laughs> but that was really a magical moment. And the thing was that Debbie um, from Home and Family was a Virginia girl too. So we felt like sisters right from the get go. And um, they just really made me feel like family. And um, it was a lot of fun. I got to watch a lot of other scenes get filmed and, and see some of the actors that I had always watched. And so that was a really you know, kind of bucket list moment. And then the other one was probably, um, I got invited to, they do a winter and a um, summer Hall of Fame, Hallmark Hall of Fame kind of party. And they're in Beverly Hills and they're really fancy and all of the actors and actresses are there and the directors and all that stuff. And I just kind of melted into the background and didn't hardly talk to anybody because it was like everybody from my every favorite movie. <laughs> and the only person that I did really talk to was Kelly Martin, who is the star of my favorite Hallmark movie, The Christmas Ornament. And, and that happens to be about a widow and that beautiful butterfly ornament and hit the wreath out of the mittens and the, oh my gosh, I absolutely love that movie. And when I was on Home and Family, Cameron did the, I love Christmas for me, but I told Kelly how much I love that movie. And she said, oh, I'm so glad I was able to, she said, they kept telling me to pull back, but it was such a serious moment for her and I said well I'm a widow and that is my favorite movie and so that was really nice I chatted with her and her husband for a few minutes and um so those are probably my favorite moments with Hallmark but there are a million of them they are wonderful to be around um on set is just like you would think it is people are polite and nice even at midnight when they're still working there must be 5 million feet of electric cord and they are just dancing around like I don't know how they get it all done so quickly. It is amazing. And in hope at Christmas, it was raining. It was raining like crazy and cold. It was freezing. And so I even went and bought wool socks for the directors and producers, guys that were right there in the, <laughs> in the, um, the tents where I was hanging out the next day because I felt so bad for them, but they, um, Hang these like big parachute tents over where they're shooting and nobody would ever know that it was a rainy gray day and they shovel that snow into place and you know keep the lights going and it looked like a, a beautiful winter snowy day that's incredible it's magic <laughs> sure how that happens i know <laughs> Cindy wants to know how you became associated with Hallmark like did they contact you or did you reach out to them or was it your agent or something like that was not my agent. It definitely was a dream. I had always, and I had told my agent when I first met her, I would love to have a Hallmark movie someday. And she was like, yeah, you and everybody else. And yeah. So um, yeah, it, it was the strangest thing really. So I had, um, I used to do Facebook parties and um, like Facebook pajama parties. And so I did those with Hallmark movies because I love them so much. And the Christmas note was coming out and it had kind of a military angle and I grew up in the Norfolk Virginia Beach area and so that kind of seemed like a perfect one and uh, so when it was premiering we were going to have this pajama party on a Facebook party and a Facebook page and so I was tweeting trying to get people to come to the party and I got a tweet back from the Christmas note and it said thanks for building buzz about our new movie and so I sent them a note back and I said well you're so welcome I love Hallmark and you know I just I said I lived in Virginia Beach I think and or used to live in Virginia Beach and that I was really excited about it and I was gonna have a Facebook party and so a week goes by and they direct messaged me that time this time and they said oh my gosh we didn't know you were an author maybe one day one of your books will become a Hallmark movie and I just stared at that tweet and I was like, oh. and so what I typed back was, 
a girl can dream. (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't think anything else about it. And the next week, my agent got a call from Crown Media saying they were interested in Christmas Joy. Well, I had turned in that manuscript in May the previous year, and this was January. And um, we had not edited it yet. So my editor at St. Martin's Press and I put our heads together quickly, got down to editing because it wasn't supposed to come out, you know, until October that year. And um, we edited as quickly as we could while the fire was hot and we sent it into Crown Media and, you know, it was crickets for a long time. And then suddenly I got the call that they were optioning it. And I was so excited. So I get this, all these contracts and you have to get them notarized. And it's way bigger deal than, way bigger contracts than the book contracts. And my book, my uh, literary agent couldn't handle it. So she pulled in, you know, a, a movie guy to help with it. So there's like wow. all these people. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, it's optioned. And um, <laughs> my agent said, don't get too excited. A lot of books get optioned. Very few end up movies. I'm like, okay. Well, a couple months later, they optioned Hope at Christmas too. And uh, so I still didn't have a movie, but I had two books optioned. And the next year on Valentine's Day, I was out on the deck and Andrew was cooking steaks and we had glasses of red wine and we were just having a beautiful Valentine's Day and my phone rang and I kind of looked at it and I wasn't going to answer it and he goes well who is it and I said it's my agent and he goes well you have to answer it so I did and she said Nancy I would never ever ever call you on Valentine's Day but I really think you want to hear this and she called to tell me that Christmas Joy was going into production. And in a week, I was headed to Vancouver to be on set. <laughs> it was so crazy, you know, that it was just a crazy whirlwind. And so when I met the gal who um, was the production manager, she and I hit it right off. She's so great. And she was from North Carolina, from the Raleigh area. So we had a lot in common. And I asked her, about it you know I was telling her about the tweet and all that and she goes well I don't know anything about that tweet or anything she goes I happen to just see it in Barnes and Noble and love the red cover with the wreath on it and picked it up and so she was the one who ended up buying it to put it in production um, but was not the same people that looked at it and optioned it originally so you never know um yeah, I always tell everybody, I said, you know, here's the secret. There is no secret. <laughs> Just be sincere, you know, let the doors open like they will. Don't force it and the right things will happen. And, um, you know, I just, I guess I could have tried to get a lot of people to, you know, push you know, my books in front of people or, but yeah, you know, nobody really knows the path. <laughs> The more I've talked and even the more people I know, nobody really knows how to get your book into Hallmark. Um, When I uh, wrote The Secret Ingredient, that was an original book for Hallmark Publishing. And um, it ended up being the first Hallmark Publishing book to be a Hallmark movie. Um, But there had been a lot of other Hallmark Publishing books. So I don't know how I got lucky. It was also the first... um, Hallmark publishing book to be an audio book so um yeah so lots of blessings lots of uh I'm just so thankful I I I don't know I mean there's a there are a million other writers out there just as deserving and working just as hard um so I am thankful for the opportunities that continue to just rain down Thanks, Nancy. That was such a cool story. I love that. Um, I've wondered that myself too, because I've I've heard of that happening, but didn't know really how it worked out. So yeah, you just, just never be, know. Be yourself. <laughs> That's right. Just be yourself. So um, Lori has a really great question. Uh, it was before you took the actual plunge to leave corporate America to write full time. What did you do to prepare yourself for becoming an author, and how prepared were you to leave and write full time? I didn't prepare. (laughs) I I really didn't know that I was going to do that. Um, You know, I was working full time and full time as a senior vice president of Bank of America was a lot of hours. I wrote um, when I was on the plane, US Airways should have gotten the dedication on the first eight books. I 
don't know how I left them off. Um, and I, I wasn't thinking of it as a full-time job. I mean, I, my career was um, get, afforded us a really nice lifestyle. Um, but when Mike passed away, you know, I really did feel the need to do something that made a difference. And I, I can back up here and tell you why I started writing to begin with. Um, you know, when I turned 40, my, um, my job, I was a senior vice president in technology, was my job that year ended up being shipping technology positions offshore to India. A lot of those people had worked for me before. And I understood the business reason. I did a good job at it, but, but it really hurt me personally. I wasn't proud of it, you know? And so I wanted to do something nice to kind of make up for it. And so what I thought was if I could write one book to help one girl through one lousy day, that would be the gift. Because when I was divorced, you know, books got me through it. Jane Ann Kranz, man, I still have every book she ever wrote because those books, you know, were strong women, you know, coming up from the depths of whatever sadness they hit and they gave me strength to keep trying and so books were always my heroes they got me through sickness through divorce through sadness through losing friends whatever moving and so if I could do that it just felt like the biggest thing I could do and I just had no idea it was ever going to lead me to this none um, so, you know, I, had, I was writing and working and I really thought that's just how it was going to be. And, um, I did have about eight books out, you know, before I ever retired, but there was no guarantee, you know, you do those contracts and it's for a book or two, you know, or three, I've had some three book contracts, but you don't know if they're going to sell, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they'll show up even at the book side and never buy your book because they don't know. I'm not really going to read, you know, <laughs> you're like, please buy my book. That's going to make my living. Um, but you just don't know. So I just kind of put my faith in it and, you know, pray that the, the people that need to hear those stories will hear them. And I, I try not to ever be, um, you know, preachy or anything like that in my stories, but there usually are themes, you know, that hopefully will help people when they face a problem. And, you know, my hopes are with the shell collector that, you know, if somebody has lost their spouse, that they will feel that camaraderie that, yep, that's how I, that's how I felt, or I didn't feel like that, but boy, I get it. Or for someone who hasn't, you know, we're all going to be there eventually. I hope that something in those books and stories will echo in their mind and help them kind of be able to stand up or take that next step or, or know that, you know, they prayer first, not last, not when you're in the heap on the floor. I mean, you do need to pray them too, but, <laughs> but before then it's way better and easier on your heart and your makeup. Um, there are just so many little things and, you know, whether it's, um, you know, being brave enough to take that first step or bold enough to try just like me going for the writing thing. You know, if you're a, an artist, you know, put your art on paper, put it out there for the world. It's your gift, you know? And it is scary. It's still, you know, I've got what, I think 32 books and seven movies, right? But it's still terrifying every time I put out a new book and what people are gonna think. And so I have a launch team and there, I think there's 150 people on that launch team. And um, so they've been reading the book for about four or six weeks now. And I've been getting feedback and getting those early endorsements and stuff. And even though I've got all that positive information from them, still on release day, I'm like, are they, are they gonna like it? Are they gonna tell their friends? Are they gonna know, you know, is, there, is this gonna hit somebody special? It just, it's, it, I can't explain it, it is terrifying. But, you know, I, I didn't have an old lady maid in my life, but when I lost Mike, I definitely had my own sort of maid. Um, my girlfriend, Pam, didn't call and say, hey, what can I do? She showed up, you know, she just showed up and her husband probably gave me as big a gift as she did because she came and stayed with me for two months, two months. She helped me get on my feet. She didn't give me advice. She didn't tell me how to grieve. She, when I was ready and said, I think I just need to pack some of this stuff up. She's like, great, let's do it. Putting the boxes together, man. She didn't even miss a cue, you know, and um, she was just there and she listened when she needed to listen and she let me cry on her shoulder when I needed to cry. So, I mean, I think everybody needs a maid in their life at some point. And I hope this story will 
open their eyes that maybe your Maeve is somebody that is unexpected because I am sure the last person that Amanda expected to find on that beach that was going to help her feel brave enough to take a step or feel like it's okay for me to be happy again was going to be this old lady walking down the beach with her flowy skirts you know <laughs> and but it was a, a remarkable friendship and, and in the book they may have even says to her you know if somebody looked at the two of us right now they would think that we are an unlikely pair but we really have rescued each other and um and I'm mean, I still cry just thinking about them. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's the story of who inspired me. That's really sweet. Um, I'm sure your friend was touched to know that she was kind of peripherally in your book as well. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I warned her. I was like, okay, I just want you to know. I've kind of mentioned you a few times. <laughs> and Bobby, <laughs> who Thanks. was beginning to wonder if she was really ever coming home. <laughs> He, that was very sweet and he still likes me after all that too because we all went on a, a two-week cruise and a uh, rail trip to Alaska later that year <laughs> oh, fun. yeah it was fun <laughs> oh I forgot to mention let's see Darla says you rocked that home and family episode that's when we were talking about Hallmark <laughs> she, <Ew. laughs> she must have seen that and somebody so else said fun. I love Kelly Martin let's see isn't she great she is one of my favorites I just love her. She's so real to me. And then Peg asks, oh, we're switching back to Hallmark, if that's okay. She she asked about, um, can you tell us anything about your newest Hallmark movie that's coming out next? Yes, Peg, I can. How <laughs> to almost forget. So this is, so it's funny. I, people have been like teasing me, like I've been the Christmas Hallmark girl because you know, I've got a few movies and I've written a lot of Christmas books over the last six years. And um this is my big beach year. I actually do not have a Christmas book coming out this year. I have the uh, mass media or mass media, mass market version of A Heartfelt Christmas Promise will be on sale everywhere in September, but I don't have a new Christmas book out this year. Um, but Sand Dollar Cove, which I put out, gosh, I wish I knew for sure what year it was. I think it was 2012. I'm not sure, but Brenda Novak, who is an amazing author, her son has diabetes and she would run an auction every year to raise money for juvenile diabetes research. And I was always a big advocate for that auction. And when I worked at Bank of America, I would do like that corporate matching. So it was awesome. I'd spend as much as I could and then match it. So um, we love doing that. Well, she just the I forget what happened, but they decided not to do an auction and they did an anthology instead. And so we had to write these short stories of like 30,000 words. Well, mine ended up being like 40,000, but hers did too. So it was okay. Um, and it was called Sand Dollar Cove. And there were so many positive comments about that story that I went ahead and put it out as a single book after the anthology was taken down because they, we just sold it for two months and then it just went away. And um, so it's been out there for quite a while. It's a quick read. It's set on the Outer Banks and a really a beautiful story. And yeah, sure enough, Hallmark optioned that a few years ago and they just finished filming it um, about a week ago and they filmed it in Connecticut. And um, it was funny because uh, the, the gal at Hallmark, who's from Raleigh, we were so excited because she had been scouting locations in North Carolina. They were supposed to film it last year and then COVID hit and we weren't able to do that. And so she'd been scouting locations in North Carolina. And then they were actually, I think it was Myrtle Beach was saying, oh, we'll take it. And um, then because of all the COVID restrictions and guidelines and stuff, they ended up not being able to film it in North Carolina, which kind of broke both of our hearts. So it's being filmed in Connecticut. And so we are saying Sandra Dollar Cove is in Connecticut in the movie because we know you cannot fake North Carolina with Connecticut. <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> there are rocks up there. And I think they even moved it to the bay and not the ocean in the movie. The movie is very different. I hope everybody will read the real book and then we can talk about all the differences <laughs> when the movie airs, but it will premiere on June 26th and air again on June 27th. I don't know what the other dates will be after that, um, but they, they filmed it very quickly. It took about three weeks. Mystic Connecticut was so excited to have it. There were several articles um, about the movies and I tried to post a few of the uh, set pictures on the Facebook page. So hopefully you've seen those. 
um, and I'll be giving y'all some pictures of the in process uh, filming as soon as Hallmark gives those to me. So um, that should be in the next week or so. That's so fun. Yeah. Uh, I did put a link to your website's um, you. page for Sand Dollar Cove. Perfect. If anybody wants to check that book out. Thank you. And, yes. And then we have a, another question from Lori. Um, since you achieved your dream of a Hallmark movie, do you have anything else on your bucket list of achievements that you're working towards right now? Well, this, uh, the shell collector was one of them. And um, it, it was kind of, it was difficult. Um, it wasn't really the kind of story that I had written before is a lot more serious. And so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I'm praying it's going to be a, a really great bestseller and a lot of people will pick it up and it will touch a lot of hearts. Um, as far as bucket list, I would love the shell collector to end up being a movie. Sony Pictures has it and is, is looking at it. Um, hopefully they will decide to give us a deal. Um, Hallmark has it too. Um, and we'll just see, you know, with fingers crossed. The movies are so much fun. I mean, they never, ever, ever can get all the details in the movie. I mean, it's just so much smaller. So I, I would love to have it be a movie, but I don't think it would ever be as riveting as the book. And even in the, the uh, secret ingredient, the, uh, the story was so great. They did a great job on that movie. But, you know, there was a whole story arc. If you haven't read the book, um, there's a whole story arc with Andrew and his father that is really beautiful. And, you know, they really had a struggling relationship. And when he comes back to town and, you know, things are, he's working on things with Kelly, he's also repairing that relationship with his dad. And I just love that part of the story. And of course, you don't see that at all in the movie. And of course, there's some horseback riding. And of course, the first time I ever rode a horse was with Andrew, my, my new husband, who I just married on Christmas Day um, last year. Not this past one, you know, since a year and a few months we've been married. Um, but so some of those things speak into the book too. Wonderful. Um, congratulations, by the way. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Peg asked, um, is there a favorite scripture that you used in the book? Mm. There is, but I, you know, still that the interrupt worry with gratitude is even more important to me than that because it's so easy to translate to people. And sometimes, you know, I, I never wanted to, anybody to feel like they're gonna be turned away um, if they don't have the scriptures in their hand. So, um, you know, I, I feel like that's such a simple message and it guides them in the right direction that that one just really wields the power in the story for me. That's lovely. Thank you, yeah. Peg. I really <laughs> love that. Um, let's see. There's a couple more questions about filming. Um, Cindy asked which actresses you would like to see play if this um, shell collector is made into a movie. Oh, well, gosh, you know what? Erin Cahill is at the top of my list just because I just love her so much. Um, but, you know, I, I love Lacey Chabert. And I love Candace Cameron Bure. So yeah, they're always, and so I, this is so goofy, but I have to take a picture of this for y'all someday. But I use these great big sticky note wall pads that I kind of write stuff on. And the first thing I do when I start working on my plot is I write the title of the story at the top and then I put her name and his name. And then I start cutting out pictures and taping them. And then yeah, I tape their pictures of their dogs. <laughs> and what their house looks like and so I've got this whole thing where I've got this vision and it does help keep me from turning you know a blonde hair short girl into a tall brunette later in the book so it does serve a little bit of a purpose but it definitely is like well this is my Hollywood dream board <laughs> so yeah there have been a lot of times when you know I could go oh gosh well if you want to know who you should cast I could just tell you <laughs> Who I was thinking of. You have them all picked out. <laughs> yes, yeah, like Jesse Metcalf, Lisa Chabert. Yeah, there's lots of them. <laughs> um, a related question from Don was, um, how much say do you get in creating um, the movie from your books? If they're not being true to your story, could you get them back on track? No, zero. Um, they do not ask any advice. They do not offer any opportunity to do anything about it. They don't like to even let you see the screenplay. Um, 
I've, I've done enough work with them that I've, I've been able to see some of them beforehand, which has been great. And I would never, knowing that that's how it works, I would never push that agenda anyway. Um, but no, none. And the funny thing is that sometimes I think that they miss opportunities that I could have helped them with. You know, so here's an example, Hope at Christmas. Like how many Hallmark movies have cookies in them? Uh, all of them. So, <laughs> well, in Hope at Christmas in the book, I intentionally made it a, not a cookie event. They were making dipped pretzels into caramel and hot fudge, and dark chocolate, and then rolling them in nuts and candies. And we had this whole little assembly line and it was a really fun scene. It could have been so much fun in a movie because it had been so visual. And don't you know, there have been families across America making those pretzel rods. <laughs> I really feel like they missed that opportunity. So yeah, I wish they did kind of invite me to at least kind of say, well, what about this one little thing? Because I think there would be some nods to the book. It'd be super fun that way. But, um, and then here's on the other side in Hope at Christmas, um, at the end of the book, spoiler alert, <laughs> B dies um, and they don't let her die in the Hallmark movie. But they, um, which is fine. I was okay with that. And I knew that was happening. But what I did not know was that they were going to have her be going off on a cruise with the mayor. Well, in the book, the mayor is in there shopping for a, a, a Christmas gift for his wife. <laughs> I was like, no, that cannot be happening. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is definitely not Hallmark. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So we kind of took a side road with that one. Exactly. <laughs> so back to the book. Um, Brooke asked if you you were talking about your vision board. Is that what you call it? Which is I love that. Um, Brooke <laughs> asked if if you come up with the title when you start writing it or after the book is written. And I know sometimes the publisher makes the title. So how, do, how does that work? You know, I have been really lucky. I mean, I've been able to do all my titles, but this last one, what, remain, ugh, what remains true, um, that story was actually called Sweater Weather. I was so excited to write this fall book with great sweaters and pumpkins and all that. And then they decided they were going to put it out in the summer. <laughs> so we were like, oh, okay. And so they helped me. We came up with, Gosh, I bet we had 50 titles going back and forth and sales hated the ones we loved and we kind of hated the ones they loved. And, and so what remains true became that title and I still can never remember it. I still want to call it sweater weather and it doesn't even go into fall anymore. I had to change all that. Um, so yeah, so other than that, I have been so lucky to be able to name all my own stories. And the funny thing too was the shell collector. When I turned that in, I said, I know this isn't a great title. It was my, you know, working title. That's just like, that's what she is, the show collector. And there's already some books out with that title, but they absolutely loved it. And so oh, we okay. kept that, and I didn't mean to keep that one. <laughs> um, I like that you get to keep them. I know some people don't or don't want to. So that's really fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of comments about the, the plot twist in your other movie. Um, Peg says that sounds more like a Lifetime movie. <laughs> Susan, Susan says, I dislike it when they change the storyline. And Amber says, um, it's it's crazy how they rewrite books to movies. And that's why most readers prefer the books. So yeah. Susan says, that's why I consider them different stories with the same name. Because <laughs> Thank you, Susan. You know, I, and I, I wasn't aware of that even when I first started getting those movies made with Hallmark. And we had that big party when Christmas Story premiered. It was my first movie. And so I had, you know, lots of friends and neighbors and stuff over. And some of my friends, you know, are avid readers and they were ticked off. Like, where's Molly? Why is Molly in the story? That is not what happened. <laughs> ben, they make him Ben look like he lives with his mama. What's that all about? You know, I mean, it was really funny. So um, yeah, you can definitely get Ben out of shape if you're not careful about it. So I try to set the expectation that they're going to be different. You know, the books are better. I totally believe that and see that and understand it now um, because there just really is no way you could convey all the intricacies that you can in a book on in, in that format you just can't well that's really nice that you've kind of reached an understanding with them I'm sure that makes it easier for you to to after you see them change things yeah yeah <laughs> um, a few kind comments in the in the chat is just um enjoying your, the stories you're telling right now that's from Maggie you're telling wonderful <laughs> stories I um, mean really putting us in 
in kind of your mindset as you're as you're writing this book. So that really helped. Um, and then there was a couple. She had Trixie says I had a great time. Sorry, I had to split early. Um, <laughs> everybody just really enjoying um, your conversation so far. There's so many comments. I tried to keep up with as many as I could. And somebody else posted a picture. Let's see. Lori posted a picture of your book, um, The Secret Ingredient, with a cute little cake all dressed up. If anybody wants to see that in there. Um, Nancy, are you still there? Uh oh. Nancy, freeze for anybody else? Kimberly? Yeah, she froze for me too. Okay. Uh, let's see if she hops back on. We were just about to say goodnight. It's for me too. It looks like it's storming that way. Okay. So it could be weathering that way. Well, hopefully she'll hop back on in a minute. Um, we've been having a great time though. Oh, yeah. nope. She jumped right off. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to give her a minute and see if she comes back on. If not, I guess we'll call it there. <laughs> well, we are going to be having a premiere for um, her movie um, on January 29th in my book club, where book club. Um, we're oh, actually cool. um, doing her book. We're going to be reading it and then doing the comparison. So she'll be doing fun stuff with that as well. Oh, so. that's really good. So you're reading, you're reading the book and watching the movie and like comparing. Mm -hmm. We do. That's what that what that's why I made the book was because of homework. <laughs> um, my book club is based off of their books and movies. Do you want so. to? Um, Brooke asked if you would put your your group. A couple of people are asking for the I name sure of the group. Is it virtual oh, yeah. right now? It is. It's always virtual. I do have a few members that are local, but everything's always virtual because we have people all over. Um, I have to pull it up. I'm sorry. I don't have, I have all Nancy stuff pulled up, not mine. <laughs> that's okay. So we, um, I think, I don't think she's going to be able to get back on. Um, that's it. She last, she made it the whole hour. So that's fine. <laughs> so um, Kimberly is going to look up her, the name of her book club. I got you. Oh, there it is right there. Your Facebook club, Wear Book Club. Um, and remember, we'll have books from Nancy, um, and they will be signed. Oh, there she is. She popped back in. Let her say goodnight to everybody. Um, where'd she go? Let me pull her back up here. We will also be doing giveaways. And then you said you would let everybody know who won. Yeah, so Nancy is going to pick um, one person who registered to um, give away something and I'll be sending out an email through Eventbrite to announce the winner and then we'll we'll mail that. So keep in touch. I think Oh my gosh, be... I'm back. Can you hear You're me? Back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was sending a note going, did our quarter run out? I thought because we ran over it kicked us off. <laughs> no, no. Um, I was just about to say goodnight, but we it, it doesn't have a timer on it. So yeah. Oh my goodness. I was like, oh my God. I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> well, we I do have some prizes. So um, to let y'all know, I do have some of these, uh, three of these beautiful little shells that I want to send. So I will be picking three names for that. I will be picking another name for a, an autographed copy of the shell, or no, that, not the shell collector, Sandal Cove, the one that's going to be the movie. And then um, we do have a box set. Kimberly has put together a beautiful box set with an autographed copy of the book, um, a pretty little shell bracelet and bookmarks, some swag. Um, and we're gonna give one of those away too. So um, we're gonna use the registered list and the people who showed up and pull those names and send them out to let y'all know who, uh, who won the prizes. <laughs> Love that. Forgive me. <laughs> An extra fun little little thing for our event tonight. That's so great. Thank you all so much for coming and spending some time with me. And I, I love to be able to share and chat. You know, there's so many things we haven't been able to do on book signings and conferences. And so I've missed y'all so much. And I appreciate you reading my stories. I hope you'll tell everybody about them. Leave your reviews. And um, let's pray this one does a great, great thing. <laughs> I think it will. Everyone here loves it. And you're getting just so many lovely messages about how much people enjoyed your talk about it. So Maggie says she laughed and laughed and Lori says thank you and wishing you all success. So um, I'll let you scroll through those if you want to see the, the fun there. There's thank you. So many. <laughs> um, yes, we had so much fun. Thank you, Nancy, for your time and for telling us about your book and your other stories. It's been so much fun talking to you.
Thank you. Well, we'll do it again. Thanks for being a part of my journey. Of course. And let us know when the next one comes out. Yes, so, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody just keep an eye on our email so that we know who, um, who won our prizes. Yes. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Thanks so much for coming. Bye, Peg. Bye, Brooke. Bye, Amber. Bye, everybody. Bye, Lori. I'll see you in a week. Bye, Susan. Bye, Bye, Urban Nuke family and Cindy and Darling Dawn and everybody. (laughs) Who am I missing? Love y'all. Bye, Lorraine. Bye, now. Bye, Dawn. Bye, Mama. My mama's face isn't even on the screen. She was there. (laughs) You know she was here. She was right next to you, Lori. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye, Cindy. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much. Jackie, you've been awesome. Thanks. You too, Nancy. Kimberly, thank you for putting all the links out there. It's really helpful. <laughs> You're very welcome. Bye. All right. Good night. Good night.